All right, so let's focus on some basic stoichiometry problems. I've got an equation here. It's already balanced. I filled out the table for you to make life easy here. And now all we have to do is read the problem and figure out what we're given and what we want to end with. And then we just use the information in our table to help us out with that uh, solution. So it says, what mass of C2H2? So I'm going to end with that. That's what I'm looking for. Is produced when water is added to. Now it doesn't tell us how much water, so we just assume there's an abundance. I didn't spell it correctly. All right, so we just assume there's an abundance. We don't worry about that. It's not going to limit us. It's not going to run out. Is added to that much calcium carbide. So we write 5.00 grams of CaC2. On the bottom, I put grams of CaC2. On the top, I write what I'm looking for. Mass is going to be grams, and you have to write the formula, C2H2. Don't try to shortcut it and ignore writing that formula because you'll see how important that is once they get really complicated. All right, so whatever you write here goes on the bottom. We have to look and find the number that goes with grams of calcium carbide. So we look for grams. We go over here under calcium carbide, 6, 4.1. And then we see grams of C2H2. So we find mass, go over till we hit C2H2. That's 26. And we put our 26 on the top. Multiply 5.0 times 26 divided by 64.1, and you come out to about 2.03 grams of C2H2. Okay, and that's how we know how much we're expected to make when we start with 5 grams of that. Next one it says, How many moles of water are needed? So we're going to look for, oops, all right, so I'll see the equation. We're going to look for moles of water are needed to react with. So I've got my two reactants. I've got CaCC2 and I've got H2O. So we know we've got 6.23 moles of this stuff. And the question is, how much of that do we need? So we're going to start with 6.23 moles of CaC2. It's important to write moles there so we know it's not grams. Then we're going to put moles of CaC2 down here. And then on top, we're going to look for the moles of water. So we look up in our table, we go to moles of CaC2, that's a 1, and then we go moles of water, there's a 2. So 6.23 times 2 divided by 1 is going to be 12.46 moles of water. All right, let's scroll down to the next one. How many moles of CaOH would you expect? So we're looking for moles of CaOH. We expect to be produced when 150 liters of C2H2 are created. So now I know, it doesn't matter what I start with, but now I know I'm going to produce 150 liters of this stuff. I want to know how much of the calcium hydroxide is also going to go with it. So I start with 150.0 liters of C2H2. Make sure you put that liters there so you know it's liters that you're focusing in on and not mass or moles and the fact that it's C2H2. And then we want to end with moles of CaOH. Remember, you can mix and match liters and moles. They're all connected. So we look back up at our equation. We find moles of CaOH, which is right there. So we put a 1 there. And we find liters of C2H2, 22.4. So we put 22.4 down there. And then we just do the math. 150 times 1 divided by 22.4 and you end up with about 6.7 moles of calcium hydroxide. So now I know if I'm going to make 150 liters of this, I'm also going to make 6.7 moles of that. And finally, it says draw and label the bars to replace the three question marks. So here's what it looks like before. We don't know how much of these reactants we have, but we know we start with some amount of these two guys. And we know the reaction hasn't started yet. It's before. So they haven't mixed. They haven't made any products. So we expect these guys to be zero. That's really not important at this point. It's not going to help us solve anything. It just tells us the reaction hasn't started yet. Now we see after. This is important. The fact that all of the CaC2 were used and all of the H2O was used. So the fact that these guys went down to zero is very, very helpful. Because now we know there's not an excess of something. And we know how much C2H2 we made. So what we're going to do 
is figure out a lot of information from this, from the only number we know. We know we made 350.0 grams of C2H2. The question is, how much C8, C2 do we start with? So grams of CAC, C2. And on the bottom, we put whatever's here, grams of C2H2. And that's going to tell us how many grams of CAC2 we made. So I look back up at my equation, and I find CAC2. I find the grams. So right there, 64.1. So I go back down here, and I fill in 64.1. And then I need grams of C2H2. So I go back up here. Grams of C2H2 is 26. So I go back down to 26.0. And then I do 350 times 64.1 divided by 26. And the number comes out to about 86. Point, oh, I'm sorry, 862.9 grams. 862.9. So now I know that we start with a lot. We start with 862.9 and we use all of it and it ends at zero. Then we can say if I make 350 grams of C2H2, how much water? How much of this guy did I start with? So I put grams of C2H2 down here grams of water on top, and I fill in my numbers. If I look back at the table, the water had a 36, and the C2H2 still has a 26. So I do the math, and that tells me I started with 484.6 grams of water. That's how much I needed to react with, it's not relative here, I guess, 484.6. All right, so I needed 862 of that and 484 of that, and if I put them together, I get this. Now, I just solved this problem. I figured out how much water I made or I needed by starting with how much product I made. But I could have done this another way. I could have said, if I'm going to react this much product or reactant, if I'm going to react this much calcium carbide, how much water do I need to go with it? So I could have started with 862.9 grams of CAC2 and then put those numbers there. So we got 64.1 grams of CAC2 and then grams of water on top. And guess what I'm going to get? 484.6 grams of water. They're all connected. So these two problems are going to give me the exact same answer. This bar, the amount of C2H2 is going to tell me this, and this is going to tell me this. Two different ways of getting the same thing. Now I want to figure out how much calcium hydroxide I'm also going to make. I can do this problem three different ways. Let me, uh, let me erase all this ink here. Okay. I can get this problem from this information, and this was 862.9 grams. I could say if I know I start with this, how much do I make? I could start with this information, 484.6. I could say if I start with this much water, how much of that do I make? Or I could say if I made this, how much of that am I also going to make? So I could do this three different ways. I could start with 862.9 grams of CAC2, get rid of grams of CAC2, and then go to grams of calcium hydroxide. Or I could do 484 grams of water, put grams of water on the bottom and grams of calcium hydroxide on top. Or I could do my 350 grams of Ca, I'm sorry, C2H2, put grams of C2H2 on the bottom and grams of calcium hydroxide on top. Doesn't matter how you do this, you're always going to end up with 912.0 grams of calcium hydroxide. Every single problem, if you just pull the numbers out of the table, every single problem will give you the same exact answer. So don't feel like there's a very specific number you have to start with. If you're only given one number that's not zero, then obviously start with that. But once you start getting other numbers, it doesn't matter which one you start with. They're all related. There's an underlying ratio between all of these numbers that hopefully you saw when you did the stoichiometry simulations. All right, let's go scroll down and do one more problem. 
Now, this is using acetylene torch, a welder reacts 4.50 liters of C2H2 with an abundance of oxygen gas. What volume of CO2 would you expect to be produced? And what mass of water vapor would you also expect to produce? So here's our, our uh, balanced equation. What we're going to do now is just create a mini little table for ourselves so we know what numbers we need. Moles, mass, and volume. Now, I'm not going to go crazy wasting a ton of time filling out this whole table when I only need portions of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of look ahead and see what I need. Now, it's 4.50 liters of C2H4. So I know I need liters of this. So I'm going to fill this in. I got 2 moles. 2 times 22.4 is 44.8 liters. So I need that. Uh, an abundance of oxygen gas. I don't even have to worry about oxygen gas because i got plenty of it. It says what volume of CO2 would I need. So I'm going to need volume of CO2. Um, so 4 moles times 22.4 is 89.6 liters. And then finally, what mass of water vapor. So I look over here at my water, and I want to know the grams. I know 1 mole of water weighs 18 grams. 2 moles is going to weigh 36. So I'm going to fill in a 36.0 here. And that's all I really need. I'm not going to go crazy filling off the whole table. I'm just going to fill in the parts that I need. So the first question, A, says what volume of CO2 would you expect? So we're going to start with what we know. We know we have 4.50 liters of C2H2. I immediately put liters of C2H2 on the bottom. I put liters of CO2 on top. CO2 on top. And then I fill in the numbers for my table. So CO2 is going to be 89.6 liters, and then the C2H2 is going to be 44.8. Multiply that out, and you end up with about 9.0 liters of CO2. So that's how much carbon dioxide we expect to make. And the next question, B, says what mass of water vapor would you expect to produce? So I'm going to start with 4.50 liters of C2H2. On the bottom, I'm going to put liters of C2H2. On top, I'm going to put grams of H2O, and then I'm going to write 36, because that goes from my table right there. And on the bottom, I'm going to put 44.8 liters. And when I do the math out, I end up with about 6 point, I'm sorry, 3.62 grams of H2O. So basic stoichiometry, use the information in your table. You'll be given one number, either in a problem or in a graph, that you can start with, and then just go from there. They're all connected. Everything in that table is interchangeable. It's all related. It all has an underlying uh, relationship.